You guys want to check out my basement? All right, let's go. Welcome everybody to the Cobwebs channel. My name is Daniel and today we're doing a very special video. We're doing a movie basement tour, which I'm super excited about to show you guys my movie basement. So welcome returning viewers who have been excited about this and welcome to new viewers who just want to see some cool movie stuff because you're definitely going to see that. It's not the fanciest movie basement in the world for sure, but it might give you a good idea of what you can do on a budget, you might say, because uh, I do have a lot of movies, a lot of posters, a few collectibles, nothing too crazy, but I think you're really going to enjoy it. So without further ado, Let's get going. So this is my little studio for where I actually record my videos. I just use a very simple cheap desk that I got on Amazon just for the purpose of putting my stuff on there in Blu-rays. This is my microphone I use. It's a Blue Yeti. I like it a lot. And then I just use a simple ring light for lighting my videos. All right, now that you've seen that, let's get all this stuff out of the way so you can see the movie shelves a little bit better. All right, let's check it out. Okay, so this right here is what I consider the main movie shelf. It's the one you're probably most used to seeing in my videos. And this has most of my boutique label stuff. So right over here, we've got most of my Vinegar Syndrome Blu-rays, as well as my only Second Sight release, which is their Dawn of the Dead Blu-ray set. And then I've got my Kino Lorbers on these three shelves right here, which I am very close to being out of room. So I'm gonna have to figure something else out pretty soon. And then right here, I've got my Criterions. Now this West Side Story is not a Criterion, but it's a really cool display piece. It's the 50th anniversary edition. It's got a lot of cool stuff in here. And I was actually able to give it, get it for a super cheap price. Um, so I really like displaying it here, even though it technically doesn't go with the Criterions. If we go right over here, we've got most of my Arrow video stuff. I do have some box sets uh, around the place as well. But I'm not, as you can see, I'm not a huge Arrow video collector, but um, I feel like I'm starting to get a little bit more into them, but they've never been like one of my main collection pastimes or whatever. Down here, we've got my Vestron video collection, which is almost complete and I'm super proud of it, except for the fact that I do not have a slip cover for class of 1999. All the rest are slip covers. They look so good together. They're numbered. It looks so fantastic. And then got this thing right here. So if you've got a class of 1999 slip cover lying around, email me. Let's talk. Then these three shelves right here, I've got my Warner Archive collection. Absolutely love Warner Archive. And then a few miscellaneous digi books right here, such as Poltergeist. Really, really love this one as well as Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. This is a really cool one too. So these bottom two shelves right here start my miscellaneous Blu-rays, but more on those later when we check out that Blu-ray shelf over there. Let's talk about what I've got displayed up here. I've got a lot of different box sets, including this Gothic Fantastico box set from Arrow Video, three classic black and white Italian Gothic horror films. Really proud of this one over here. This is the Severin All the Haunts BRs box set. It's their full core box set. It's got like 20 movies, something like that probably one of the coolest things I own. Down here at the end, I've got a Jason Voorhees mask. I really love this thing. I typically don't have the light on, uh, not in my videos, it's a little too distracting, but you can turn on the light, which I think is super cool. I've got some posters up here, just some 11 by 17 posters. I think they look really good above this shelf. So I've had that kind of set up for a very long time. We've got Curse of the Werewolf right here, one of my favorite Hammer horror films. We've got Fright Night, which is what I often cite as my favorite movie of all time. Uh, just the most entertaining thing I've just ever seen in my life. And then I've got a Dawn of the Dead poster. I don't have a lot of autographs, but I did get this one at a theatrical screening of Dawn of the Dead, which is a pretty rare thing. A few years ago, I got the autograph from Scott Reiner. He was actually there. I got to meet him. He signed it for me. It says for Daniel right there. I think that's pretty cool. 
Okay, so let's get comfortable on the floor here for a second. Now I figure since I'm putting this out during the spooky season, why don't I just recommend four movies off my shelf right behind me for this particular Halloween season. Okay, first up, let's talk about Mark of the Vampire. This one was put out by Warner Archive. The film came out in 1935. And if you've always wished that Bela Lugosi made a Dracula sequel, because he never really did, this movie might scratch that itch. Now, Bela Lugosi does not technically play Dracula in this film, but it's a very Dracula-like character. And the film almost functions like a spoof of Dracula movies with a very funny performance from Lionel Barrymore as the Van Helsing type character. It's fun, it's funny, the gothic atmosphere spheres off the charts. Next, Vesteron Blu-ray of Dagon. This is a Stuart Gordon horror film from actually the early 2000s. And it is a phenomenal Lovecraft adaption about this uh, couple that gets stranded on this uh, incredibly stormy seaside island. And they find out the people there are worshiping a sea god and really crazy, gross, scary stuff goes down. It's incredibly Lovecraftian. I mean, if you want that HP Lovecraft feel, this movie's going to give you that more than most any. I love this movie. Next, let's talk about this Kino Lorber release of The Spiral Staircase. Now, some might say this is a little bit more of a thriller than a horror film, and they might be right, but the old dark house atmosphere of this movie, I think will be really, really great for October. I think it's a really tense thriller. It's about a woman who is mute, she cannot speak, and it's played by Dorothy McGuire very, very well. And there's this serial killer on the loose that is killing people with disabilities. So she fears that she may be next. I think this movie from the 1940s feels extremely influential on the giallo genre. And it's a really cool serial killer thriller mystery. I'm a huge fan. And then the WNUF Halloween special. Uh, Vinegar Syndrome partner label Terror Vision put this out. This was made only like really a few years ago, but it feels so authentically out of the 1980s. It is like you taped a Halloween special from your local Kate from your local station onto a VHS tape, complete with commercials, fake commercials, of course. Uh, sometimes it fast forwards and it looks like a tape, and it's actually got a pretty spooky story by the end. It's incredibly fun and it's very Halloween-y. Okay, now it's time to talk about what's probably my pride and joy of the movie room, and that is my classic monsters wall. Absolutely love this. It's a ton of Universal Monsters stuff, but I do have a little bit of hammer representation in here as well. So right here, we have got my Universal Monsters NECA figures. These are the black and white editions. Now I have to shout out, these were all a gift from my good friend, Chris from the Figure Out Films channel. He gave me all four of these, which I thought was incredibly nice. Huge shout out to Chris. I absolutely love those. Here I have got a fantastic Hammer Vault. This is a book of every classic Hammer film. This was actually given to me by my friend Nathan from the Specifically Blu-rays with Nathan Jones YouTube channel. This is probably one of the coolest gifts I have ever received. I absolutely love this book. And, uh, and I'm really glad that I had the idea to put it up on the wall because it really makes an incredible display piece. Also right over here under these Universal Monsters figures, I do have these The Fly and Hammer Dracula Mego figures. Absolutely love these. And I usually never keep figures still in the box, but I think they look really cool hung up right there. I switch up what VHS tapes I have right here, but for the Halloween season, I thought these were really appropriate. I have got Goosebumps, The Werewolf of Fever Swamp, as well as Casper. So it's classic 90s horror that I grew up with right here. And, uh, and I got both of these at thrift stores, I think for like a dollar a piece. That's how I get pretty much all VHS tapes. Here we've got a Jason Voorhees pop figure and then a Frankenstein, specifically from Son of Frankenstein figure, The Invisible Man and the 30 film classic monsters collection. Maybe the best box set that I have just in terms of pure value to me because I love the Universal Monsters so much and it means so much to me to have all 30 films all housed together right there. Here we've got my Scream Factory shelf. These are all Scream Factory Blu-rays, these first four shelves right here. And then this bottom shelf, I've got a few miscellaneous Blu-rays from a few other boutique labels. And then I've got a couple of posters right here, Universal Monsters posters. I absolutely love these. This is the mummy and creature from the Black Lagoon. 
absolutely two of my favorite posters in the Universal Monsters line, especially The Mummy. That actually is my number one favorite Universal Monsters poster. Man, I just love these so much. Okay, now let's walk right over here. Uh, now, unfortunately, we gotta walk by a bunch of doors. There's a lot of doors in the basement, which limits poster space, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Okay, and we got a couple other posters right here. The Terminator, one of my favorite 80s uh, action horror films, really. And uh, this poster, I've actually had longer than any poster down here. I've had it through my dorm, all through college, and it's held up really well. Of all my posters I had through that timeline of my life, this is the only one that's really held up. And then we've got The Fog, which I consider kind of a temporary poster. I love this movie, but I'm not a big fan of this reprint because it actually reprinted creases in there. This poster is one reason I ended up switching away from reprint posters, but more on that way. And then we got my TV right here. Absolutely love this TV. So this is where the movie watching magic happens. Uh, it's actually kind of weird. I've got my TV on a couple of dressers put together. I know I need to buy a nice TV stand, but when I'm constantly faced with the decision of buy TV stand, even though technically I kind of have one, even though it's kind of janky, or buy more Blu-rays, I pretty much always go Blu-rays. But one of these days I do need to get a new TV stand, but at least it's decked out for the fall Halloween season. All right, let's watch a movie. Okay, here's my couch. It's kind of a boring couch, which is why I really wanted to spice it up with really cool blankets. So I actually got these two blankets on Etsy. Uh, there is a Etsy store that sells retro VHS style blankets. I love these. I think they make this boring couch look so fun and so cool. And I picked these movies because they're great posters and I love these movies but also my wife loves these movies. So especially Back to the Future, which is her favorite. Uh, so pretty much anytime she's down here watching movies with me or whatever, uh, she uses the Back to the Future blanket and I always use Ghostbusters, but I love them both. And then I got this pillow right over here that I wanted to talk about. This is a Netflix DVD pillow. I actually won this in a Twitter contest they did. They did this thing where you replied to their tweet with the last movie you love that you rented from Netflix DVD and you could win a prize. And I actually was a Netflix DVD subscriber for a long time. So I told them Gold Diggers of 1933, which is a movie that I love. And, uh, and I won and they sent me this pillow. So I kind of love it, especially now. It's a retro item of the bygone era because rest in peace, Netflix DVD. I've discovered a lot of great movies through you and I will miss you. And then of course, I got to show you Wolfie. We got Wolfman right here. He always watches movies down here with us, um, but he's kind of annoying. He talks through movies and he's always like telling us where we've seen each actor before. And I'm like, I get it, I know. So it's a little bit annoying, but we still love him. And then I have got these Halloween pillows out here for the season. It is the season, guys. Gotta get some Halloween pillows. And then over here, we've got my main poster wall. And I say main posters because this is where I've got the big 27 by 40 posters. And this is where I've got the original posters. Like I said, I got kind of burned out on reprint posters because the quality is so hit or miss. You just never really know what you're going to get. And all of these movies are from the 90s, which might surprise you because I talk about pretty old stuff on this channel most of the time. But the fact is, if you buy original posters from the 90s to the present, their size is going to be 27 by 40. And you can get a 27 by 40 frame pretty cheap anywhere, Walmart, Target, whatever you want. So it's pretty easy to frame those posters, pretty cheap. But if you get older posters, they're 27 by 41. And that one inch difference makes for, it's pretty difficult to get frames for that size. You can get them, but they're pretty expensive. And I just didn't want to pay that much to frame my posters. So I just went with all 90s movies all movies that I absolutely love. And I got great deals on all of these. I did not break the bank on any super rare collectible posters. So down here at the end, we have got Nowhere to Run, which is one of my absolute favorite Jean-Claude Van Damme movies. And then we've got Blast from the Past right here, which man, that's, that's one of my favorite romantic comedies of all time. But it's a special poster because romantic comedy, they don't generally have like really cool looking posters. But this is an absolutely beautiful poster, just really eye catching. I love the design and I'm very happy to have Brandon Fraser and Alicia Silverstone on my wall because I love those two so much. And then we've got Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. I think you guys know how much I love Robin Hood. I love that movie so much. And this is kind of cool because this is actually a discontinued design of the poster because Kevin Costner didn't like it. Typically, you'll see a different poster design. But 
but um, this is one that uh, I liked better, frankly. I thought it was a cooler looking poster. It popped more. And then at the end, I had to get a horror movie on here. And this is definitely one of my favorite 90s horror posters. I think it's an absolutely beautiful poster. Wes Craven's The People Under the Stairs, and it's a great movie. Now, as you can see, we've got like this built-in shelf in the basement, which is kind of weird. And at one point I would put up like figures, collectibles, things like that. And the problem that I ran into is my cats would repeatedly jump up here and knock them down onto the floor. But the one solution that I found is if I line up VHS tapes and also some books, they don't knock those over. That's much more difficult for them. So this worked out, it, it worked out for something to do with this and it kind of jumped me into VHS collecting, which is pretty fun. the classic swashbuckler from the 90s, Cutthroat Island, a terrible bomb of a movie, but a movie that I really enjoy, and it's a very cool design of a VHS tape. Here's a romantic comedy from the 1959 that I actually grew up with because my dad loved it. Pillow Talk with Rock Hudson and Doris Day, really fun movie. At a yard sale, I found Scream 1 and 2. I kind of think these are probably worth something because horror VHSs tend to be the most rare, and these are extremely beloved movies, especially today. It feels like Scream is more popular than ever. Here's a really cool one. I actually got this from KD Video. This is the 2022 Netflix Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which doesn't have any official physical release because Netflix sucks. Yeah, and she, uh, this is a VHS tape that she made, that small business, KD Video. Very, very cool. I really like that movie. Right here, I've got my second desk. What, Daniel has two desks in his basement? Yes, I do. That other desk, I don't use for anything other than filming. This is my practical desk that I actually do stuff on, like editing, anything else that I wanna do on my computer at a desk, on my laptop, as you can see, there's nothing here at the moment. Um, I do right here. Now, if we walk right over here, we have got the third and final Blu-ray shelf. I really love this shelf. I just got it on Amazon. I used to have a shelf here that I actually built myself, but my cats, again, talking about my cats, they knocked it over, broke it. There were Blu-rays all over the place. So I went ahead and upgraded to this shelf right here. And this is all just miscellaneous Blu-rays, basic studio stuff, generally speaking. And down there at the bottom, I have got a bunch of kids, Blu-rays for my son. He's not really old enough to watch Blu-rays yet, but he does like to sit on the floor and pull them off the shelf. So I thought, hey, he might as well pull the kids' movies off the shelf, right? And then I've also got this Samuel Fuller box set, which shouldn't be there, but I kind of don't have a space for it somewhere else. Up here at the top, we've got Star Wars stuff. I'm actually a huge Star Wars fan. Don't talk about it a ton on the channel because who cares? Everybody loves Star Wars, but I do love it. I've got a bunch of Lego sets. I love Star Wars Legos, love putting them together. And then I've got a couple of figures here, Boba Fett and Kylo Ren. Those are actually also model sets that I put together. I really like toys that I have to put together because I think it's relaxing and fun. And then up above, I've got a couple of Screen Factory posters, the posters that came with Screen Factory Collector Editions, a couple of Hammer ones, Brides of Dracula and Evil of Frankenstein. That size of poster that the Screen Factories come in is so perfect for going right up above this shelf. The only problem is I kind of want this to be like the Star Wars section because I've already got this Star Wars stuff right here and I've got so much classic monster stuff over there. I don't also need it here, but I, I've yet to find some good Star Wars posters that are that weird size, which I think is 18 by 25, something like that. So when I find some Star Wars posters that I can put in those frames, I will switch those out, but that time has not come yet. Now, one of my Vinegar Syndrome Blu-rays that I actually have displayed right over here is Beastmaster. I've got this incredible BSU release of it. Don Coscarelli, 1980s fantasy film. I really enjoy 80s fantasy movies. It's got even an amazing slipcover located inside this incredible box. And right next to it, I've got this Phantasm collection of the entire horror franchise. I really like this collection because each case has the original poster art on its individual case. That's how all the movies come, which I think is super cool. And I actually haven't seen the last two in this franchise. So Phantasm 4 and 5, got to check those out one of these days. Here's something super cool. Right here, I've got these Star Trek figures that I've actually had ever since I was a kid. Original series, Star Trek. I kind of forgot I had these for many years and then I found them in a box not too long ago and knew I had to display this. I grew up on the original series of Star Trek and I absolutely love it. And right down here, I've got a Lego set of the Batmobile from the last The Batman movie and a few pop figures. One thing that I think is really cool to have is I've got all the original six Star Wars movies in these really cool individual slip covered cases. 
and maybe in the original movies, the original trilogy, I might not have the disc that they sold inside of it. I might have a disc that has a different version, but I'm not saying anything for, I'm not saying, I'm not saying anything. I'm just, you know, I'm just kind of saying. And lest you think I would skip them, I also have the sequel trilogy right here. All very different looking releases, but eh, that's okay. I love these movies. Uh, these movies meant a great deal to me as they were coming out, and they really reignited my love of Star Wars that in many ways I have kind of left behind in childhood, so I'm very grateful to these films. You guys ever seen Trick or Treat? Not the one from 2007, but this one from the 80s, this heavy metal horror movie. Um, I have this German Blu-ray of it that actually is technically region free, and I felt very lucky to have it for quite a while because this is a hard movie to get a hold of, but it's supposedly, I think it's getting a 4K release. I thought this October, but I haven't been hearing about about it in a bit. I need to look into that again. Another 80s horror movie I'm really proud to have is Catherine Bigelow's Near Dark. This is another one that's really difficult to get a hold of, and this seems very ripe for a brand new fancy 4K release to come out, because I feel bad for everybody that can't own this movie, because this Blu-ray is so rare. But I'm really, really happy that I have it. I got it used in the store one day, and uh, I love this movie. It's a great vampire flick. Well, that's it, everyone. The full tour of my movie basement. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Let me know if you did and what your thoughts are down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, you want to continue to hear me get personal, check out my recent video on the top movies that scared me, in which I go into a lot of childhood stories and such about the movies that truly terrified me. Give me a like if you enjoyed this and a subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. With all that said, don't forget to enjoy yourself today, have some fun, and I will see you next time.